Hey guys, I'm Mrs. Keeler. I have made a video tutorial on how to make your own face mask. So this one uh, just ties at the back like this. It comes in a few different sizes and I've included the pattern along with the tutorial. So let's get started. Firstly, you will need some fabric. Any fabric that you have lying around is absolutely fine. I have lots of uh, scraps of fabric left over from projects that I've made, but if you don't have anything like this, an old pillowcase would be fine, an old shirt, a tea towel, anything basically that you've got lying around. However, I do recommend that it's a woven fabric. So if you're unsure whether it's a woven fabric or not, if you just give it a pull in different directions, grab your fabric, give it a little tug. So what you're looking for is very little to no stretch in your fabric. Okay. If you pull your fabric and it stretches quite a lot like this, then it's probably a knitted fabric. So I don't recommend a, a knitted fabric, a stretchy fabric. Choose a woven fabric with very little or no stretch when you give it a, a little pull. As well as fabric, you will need some scissors to cut out your fabric and your pattern. Some tailor's chalk, if you don't have tailor's chalk, uh, use a pen or a pencil, it's absolutely fine. I won't tell you off. A ruler. A safety pin would be um, pretty useful. A sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, a needle and thread. An iron. A towel might be really useful when it comes to ironing and pressing your seams. You'll need something to tie the, the mask onto your face with. Here I've used some t-shirt yarn. I find that's the most comfortable. Um, but you can use whatever you've got at home. So this is some random <laughs> elastic that I've kept from something. Some braided cord. A shoelace. Some more t-shirt yarn ribbon, elastic, uh, bias binding or some strips of fabric. So I've included two different types of masks um, in this tutorial. So one version is super easy so it's got an outer section and a lining section. Um, these both, both of us are the same. This one is the main pattern piece, but it's got the optional pocket, which you can insert a filter into. Um, it's just got a few more steps than the, the basic face mask. These are the pattern pieces you will need. The pattern is by Twig and Tail. This one is the original version of the twig and tail pattern. I haven't adapted the, the pocket at all. The actual mask though, I have adapted the original twig and tail pattern just to make it a little bit easier for beginners. So if you are making the basic face mask, you will just need this pattern piece. If you are making the face mask with the optional pocket to pop a filter into, then you will also need this pattern piece. So you can print them off just on A4 paper. Make sure that your scale is set to 100% in your print settings. And once you've printed them out, just make sure that the sizes have come out correctly by measuring the squares on um, each pattern piece. So the squares should measure two centimeters by two centimeters. This will ensure that your pattern creates the the right size face mask. Once you've printed out your pattern, decide what size you will need to make sure that you are following 
the uh, size lines for the correct size that you've decided to make. You can either cut out your pattern or if you want to, you can trace out your pattern following the lines. Make sure that you copy this line, which is your grain line onto your pattern piece. We'll talk about that in a moment. And I have glued my pattern piece onto some card, which will make it easier to trace around the pattern piece and cut out my pieces. I usually spend a whole lesson talking about grain lines, warps, wefts, selvages, cutting on the bias. However, this is a lesson on how to make a face mask. So I'm going to go over the bare minimum here to ensure that you can place your pattern piece onto your fabric the right way round. So a quick lesson about woven fabric. So this fabric is made up of a warp and a weft. So these are threads. So I'm just going to pretend that we've got a massive magnifying glass here and we're going to zoom in onto those uh, threads. So our threads that are running from top to bottom, the length of the fabric are called the warp. So these are represented here with the blue uh, strips of card. The um, other lengths of thread that go over, under, over, under the warp are called the weft. So these ends on the width of your fabric at the edges uh, with what's called a selvage. Okay, so you'll get some threads sort of poking out at the edge. So if you look at my fabric here, you'll see that we've got these threads poking out at the end and this is our selvage. So as you can see from here, our selvage runs parallel to our warp, okay? And our warp is the direction of fabric. So when you pull your fabric, you'll notice that there's no stretch. There's not much movement, if any, when you pull in the direction of your warp. If you pull crosswise, so if you pull along your weft, There'll be some slight stretch. So the direction that we're looking for is the is the warp. We're looking for the lengthways grain. Okay. So this arrow needs to point to the top and bottom of your fabric. So if you've got bought fabric like this one, it's easy because you've got your selvage on. You know this edge is straight, and you know that your warp runs parallel to your selvage. Okay, and you know that your warp is the strongest grain. So I'm going to place my pattern piece so that the arrows are pointing following my warp. Okay, so to make sure that this is straight, I know my selvage is straight. So I'm going to get my ruler and measure from the top of the arrow to the edge of my selvage. Um, so that measures 13. I'm going to move my ruler down to the bottom of my arrow and make sure that the distance from the selvage is the same as the top. So I'm just going to wiggle it a little bit. Okay, so I know that that arrow is going along my grain now. So I can draw around this with some tailor's chalk or a pen if you don't have one, a pencil, and then cut it out. Perhaps at home you're not using some uh, fabric like this, perhaps you're using an old shirt. So in the same way, we still need to find the, um, the grain line on our fabric. So remember that's, we're going to follow the warp, our lengthways grain line, okay? So to find that again, remember, if you pull your fabric, it's the direction where there isn't any give, there's no stretch. So if I pull it that way, I know that's my weft, it's, it's stretching a little bit. And this direction when I pull it is really solid, okay? So we need a straight line so that we can measure our grain line and ensure that it's our pattern piece is straight onto our fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little snip with some scissors. Give it a pull, okay? And our fabric, if it's woven 
it's very easy if it's woven cotton it's it's really easy to do this so that's created as a nice straight edge so it's a little bit like our selvage actually so now we can place our pattern piece onto our fabric and now we can take a ruler and measure our grain line to the edge of the fabric so make sure that the measurement is the same and then you will know that your grain line is going in the right direction on your fabric so I can draw around this now and cut it out because I'm using patterned fabric I've got my fabric folded in half so that when I cut around my fabric I'll end up with two mirrored pieces like this so faces together front of the fabric together fold your fabric in half if your um, fabric has a selvage, make sure you use it because you know that that's a nice straight edge. So make sure your selvages are together. Grab your pattern piece. Okay, so remember you need to measure your grain line. So from the edge of my selvage there to my grain line, I'm going to make sure it's the same distance at the top of my grain line and the bottom. Just move it slightly that way. Okay, and then I'm going to grab something heavy because I don't want to put pins into my fabric. I don't want to be creating any holes in there because it's a face mask. Draw around it neatly and accurately and then cut it out. Perhaps you're using a shirt or an old pillowcase and you need to find your lengthways grain line. So to do that, please follow the steps that I explained earlier by finding the lengthways grain, snipping it, ripping your fabric along that grain line and using that raw edge of the fabric as your straight edge to line up your pattern piece using a ruler. Once you've done that, draw around it and cut it out. If you're making the face mask with the optional pocket filter, you'll need to do exactly the same with this pattern piece. So measure your grain line accurately, ensure your pattern piece is correctly placed on your fabric, draw around it and cut it out. So I've got all my fabric cut out now. So I've got my outer, which is the fabric that you'll actually be able to see when you're wearing your face mask. I've got the lining, and then this is the optional filter pocket fabric. So the fabrics, they're inside out at the moment. So that means that the front of the fabric or the face of the fabric is touching each other. So that means that when you sew your seam, the front of the fabric, when you turn it out, will be nice and neat, like this one, okay? So this is the front of the mask and the seam will point inside. So the seam allowance for these pattern pieces is one centimetre. So I'm going to sew down each one of the curved edges of my outer, my lining and then my filter pocket. So ready to sew this first seam now. So I'm going to line the edge of my fabric up with the guide on the sewing machine um, it says 10 millimetres here, so 10 millimetres are, your machine might say one, so one centimetre. So I'm going to lower the lever, go forwards a couple of stitches, going to press my reverse button, okay, and then I'm just going to sew, keeping the edge of the fabric in line with the guide on my machine for one centimetre seam allowance. So because this is a curve, you'll have to just make sure that you walk your fabric through, your fingers will help, just to keep that fabric going into a curve. Because obviously the, the sewing machine wants to drag your fabric through in a nice straight line. Okay, so I'm just walking my fingers along the fabric, so I'm stirring it into that gentle curve. Just remember to reverse to lock off those stitches. Okay, 
so we've got one centimetre seam allowance on that curve so I'm going to do with that with all my pieces if you don't have a sewing machine at home and you still want to make a face mask you can use a needle and thread and the stitch that I would use would be a back stitch you still need to use a one centimetre seam allowance and I would roughly guess this by just using my little finger as a guide as my little finger is about one centimetre wide so I would stitch a back stitch one centimetre away from the edge of my fabric okay so once you've sewn these um, trim off all your loose threads and so that your masks turn out nice and, and, and neatly and you don't get any bumps on the seam um, when you're sewing curved seams, it's important just to snip um, the edge of your seam a little bit so that you get a nice uh, smooth curve when you turn it round. So I'm just going to take some sharp scissors and I'm just going to snip some little lines into the seam. Now, it's so important that you don't go up to your stitches. If you go up to your stitches, you could create a, a hole. Okay, so if you see, I'm not going quite so far up my seam allowance. Okay, so there's a nice little gap between the snip and the stitches. Okay, so you need to do that on all your pieces. Your next step is to press the seams flat and open. Now, this is going to mean that the, the face mask sits much better to your face if these are flat and open. OK, so what we're aiming for once you've ironed this seam um, is you'll be able to turn it the right way around. And your seam should all be sitting nice and flat. Now, it's really tricky to do this because we've got quite a steep curve. OK, so it's really hard if I just lay that down flat. It's really hard to get the iron on this properly and press that seam. So little trick is a towel. So if you roll, scrunch this up into a nice sort of ball head shape. And you place your face mask on there, kind of stuff it, stuff this towel into it. You should be then, you should then be able to open that seam and press it much easier. Just be careful, obviously, um, with the iron because it is very hot. Okay, so once you've ironed your seams flat and open, what you're going to do is you're going to lay your outer fabric facing up towards you. And then you're going to grab your lining and you're going to place your lining over the top of your outer fabric so that it's inside out. The seams are on show and the front of your fabric is all tucked up inside. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to put a few pins in here just to hold hold it together whilst I sew. So I'm going to line up my, my seams and I'm going to pop a pin in just to hold it there. I'm going to try and put the pin in as close to the edge as I possibly can. Now, if you can get away with without using any pins um, for this step, then that's great because obviously the more pins you put in, more holes you're putting into your face mask um, and that kind of defies the point of the face mask if it's got loads of holes in it so line the edges up okay and I'm just going to put a pin right at the end um, there as well okay line the edges of your fabric up
and I'm just going to pop a pin there right at the edge. Okay, so I've got it pinned together now. We're going to sew from one corner to the opposite corner along the longest sides. Okay, so the top corner all the way around to the opposite side and then the bottom corner all the way around to the opposite side. So you'll be left with two openings at the shorter edges here. Okay, so I'm ready to sew. So again, remember the seam allowance for this pattern is one centimetre. So again, if you're using the sewing machine, use the, the guide on your sewing machine to help you with that seam allowance. I'm just gonna remove this pin. Okay, I'm gonna put my pressure foot down. Okay, and I'm gonna sew along this, this long edge. So I'm just using a straight stitch. Start to sew. Going to reverse, lock those stitches in place. And I'm just going to go all the way down the edge. So I've reached the the seams now on the centre of my face mask. Um, so I'm just going to check that my seams are flat and, and open. Uh, just because if they're not, it'll create a little bump. And it, the bump will land right on your nose or underneath your chin. And it'll probably stop the face mask sitting as close to your face as it possibly could. Okay, so just make sure they're nice and flat and open. So I've sewn down one of the long, um, longest edges using one centimetre seam allowance. I made sure that my seams were were open so that we didn't create a, a ridge on our nose ridge or underneath our chin. And hopefully that will help the mask sit better on our face. So I'm gonna sew the other side. It's gonna start from the top corner. One centimetre seam allowance, use the guide forward a couple of stitches, press reverse, okay, and then I'm going to sew all the way down the edge. Just got to a pin, so I'll take my pin out. Okay, and I'm getting to my seams again now on the other side so again i'm just going to make sure that they're both flat and open so that we don't get a bump all the way down to the other side and i'm just going to press reverse okay so the long edges now are so they're one centimetre seam allowance and um, I've got some loose threads to snip off here okay so again on the curves so we've got some curves here where it goes underneath the chin and on the bridge of the the nose I'm just going to snip into those again just so that when I turn it out, it lies flat. So remember when you are snipping into your seams, don't go too close to your stitches because otherwise you will get a hole. Okay, so once you've done that, you can then turn your face mask the right way around. Okay, so get your fingers in one of the sides and use your thumbs to push the fabric through. Once you've got the fabric through a little bit, you'll be able to pull it out. Now you've turned the mask the right way round, it'll need a press with the iron. 
Okay, so if you're pressing this with the iron then, just make sure that if you stick your, your fingers um, in the, the, the little gap that you made and just roll your face mask a little bit so that you can't see the lining on the front of your fabric. So you might just need to manipulate your mask a little bit with your fingers. roll that seam back a little bit it might help just to push your fingers up into that seam as well okay and then just give it a press with the iron again just make sure that you can see the the outer fabric there can you just see the top just peeking over a little bit And then if you do the same with the bottom. Now you've pressed your face mask. Um, so you've ironed it with the iron. If you want to, this is optional. You don't have to do this. It's another step to do. Uh, you can top stitch along these two long edges. Uh, but you, you don't have to do this. I am going to stitch um, along those, uh, the top edge and the bottom edge, uh, just with a straight stitch and I'm going to get it quite close to the edge of the fabric. Um, so I'm just going to use a straight stitch for that. So I've just used a straight stitch um, to top, top stitch along the edge of my fabric, pretty close to the, um, the edge. It just holds everything sort of in place and where it should be, uh, especially if you're washing it. It just holds everything in place. So I'm going to sew the other edge now, okay? Okay, so I've top stitched the uh, the top edge and the bottom edge with the sewing machine. I've used a straight stitch and I've sewn quite close to the edge of the fabric. Now I've done that because um, it's going to go in the washing machine and it'll just help everything stay where it should be. Okay, and it'll stop that lining sneaking over to the front, so it'll continue to look nice and neat. So now we're going to sew the side edges up of our mask to create the channel for our string, our t-shirt yarn, wool, elastic, um, which is going to hold our mask onto our faces. So to create the channel, let's just turn it over and you're going to turn this edge over about a centimetre. Okay. So I'm just turning it over and giving it a bit of a press with the iron. And then I'm going to turn it over again. About two centimetres. Give it a press with the iron. And same on the other side. Okay, so roll it over about one centimetre. over again about two centimeters and give it a press with the iron okay so once you've done that so I'm going to sew down the edge um, of my fabric here now uh, to create the channel so I'm going to pop it underneath the sewing machine okay I'm just gonna see where my needle lands so it's going quite close to the edge forward a couple of stitches like and then go all the way down nice straight line nice straight stitch and okay, when you get to the 
the end reverse. Okay. So that's created a channel. There we go. Okay, so our channels are in. Um, so our, our mask's pretty much finished actually. So I'm just going to cut off all these these loose threads. It's completely what up to you what you use to thread through the channels to hold your face mask onto your face. Uh, you could use a shoelace. You could use some braided cord. The this is elastic. Uh, you could use bias binding. You could use ribbon. Whatever you've got really laying around. Uh, the comfiest option that I found is this t-shirt yarn. It's a little bit stretchy, but it's really soft. So it doesn't really rub your face or the backs of your ears, your head. Uh, so I'm going to use this. I've measured it and I've measured um, from my fingertips to my armpit twice. Okay. To get it through these channels, if you use a safety pin, it makes it a little bit easier. Or you could use a, a thick needle. So just stick the needle through. Okay, and then just thread it through the channel. And then through the channel at the other side. Take your safety pin off and then it's ready to wear. If you're making the version of the face mask that's got the pocket for a filter, then you'll have this piece. Now the edges on these this piece need finishing. So the edges that need finishing are the straight edges here. So at the minute you've got two raw edges and as you can see they're actually already fraying. So to prevent them from fraying they need finishing either by hand with a blanket stitch if you don't have a sewing machine. If you've got an overlocker you could use the overlocker um, to overlock those two raw edges or you could use a zigzag on the sewing machine. So I'm going to use a zigzag on the sewing machine now. Okay, so remember we're finishing off the straight edges on the pocket filter pattern pieces. So you should have two of those. So make sure that you open the piece up. Okay, and I'm just going to do a zigzag on the edge. We've got quite a, a big seam allowance for this. So I'm just going to... So I've sewn one side um of the raw edges with a zigzag stitch so I'm just going to sew the, the other sides now um, again just to stop this this raw edge from fraying. Once you've finished off um, both the raw edges on your filter pocket uh, we've got quite a little bit of pressing to do now to make sure that the seams are all sat nice and flat which will help the face mask sit more closely to your face. So now we're ready to press all the seams. If you've watched all the video so far, then you will have seen this section where I show you a simple trick with a towel to help you press those curved seams flat and open. So if we just grab our fabric that we're using to create the pocket in which to insert a filter, those edges that we've just finished with a zigzag stitch or by hand with a blanket stitch or on the overlocker need folding up and pressing with the iron to face the seam. Okay, so press the other edge over 
um, to fold it over at the notches so that the raw edge is pointing towards the seam and make sure it's just lined up properly so the uh, edge of the folded bit of fabric should line up and follow the the line of the the pattern piece okay press with the iron okay so on the inside now it should it should look like this the next thing i'm going to do is just sew a straight stitch down here just to keep that folded edge down where it should be so onto the sewing machine then let's sew those edges over uh, to stop them coming untucked so to secure them down into position so we're just going to use a centimeter seam allowance like all our seams that we've sewn so far on this face mask so sew all the way down reverse when you start and when you finish and we're going to repeat that on the uh, opposite side of our face mask so it should now look like this with your two straight stitches either side on that pocket for the filter. Now we're ready to place all three pieces together. So we're creating a little sandwich with our face mask pattern pieces. So we've got our outer fabric, our pocket for our optional filter section and then our lining um, to place together. Okay, so I've got my three layers together. I've got the outer fabric, which is the fabric you're going to see, pointing up towards me. The seam is touching the table. I've got my filter pocket fabric, the seam pointing upwards. So the nice side is facing the face of my fabric. And then I'm going to just put my line in over the top of the whole whole thing like that with the seam pointing up towards me so we've got our face mask sandwich okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a few pins in just to hold it together so it's really important that our seams are flat and open so that we don't get a big bulky section of mask on our nose or underneath our chin because we want it to fit nice and smoothly. So my seams are all flat and open and I'm just going to pop a pin through there just to hold it all together. Okay, and then I'm just gonna warp my fingers down the edges, just making sure that it all lines up. And I'm going to pop a pin in that end section there. Okay, just gonna go to the other side now. Again, making sure that the seams are all flat and all open and the lines are all lined up, the seam line, all lined up, flat and open. And I'm just going to pop a pin again to hold it all together as close to the edge as I can. Okay, and then I'm just going to work my fingers down the edge and just manipulate it all together so the edges of the fabric line up. Spend a little bit of time here just making sure that you've got your filter pocket edge tucked over inwards pointing the seam. Okay. So it's all lined up. And I'm just going to pop a pin in that end. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch using the sewing machine and a one centimetre seam allowance from this corner 
all the way down the long edge to the opposite corner. And then I'm going to sew again one centimetre seam allowance from this corner all the way along the edge to this corner. So I've got all my fabrics together. I'm going to just take the pin out. Now I'm sat at the machine, lower my presser foot. I've got my fabric lined up with the one centimetre seam allowance. So off we go. Reverse. Keep the edges all in place. So I'm coming up to the pocket fabric here, just going to make sure it's lined up and it's tucked in the direction it should be. Okay, so getting up to my seams, I'm just going to take that pin out and just make sure that the seams are all flat and open because if they're not, it'll create a little bump and it won't sit on your nose properly. So once you've sewn your layers together, all the way across the top and all the way across the bottom, Trim off all the loose thread and also because we've got some curves again it's a good idea just to cut into your seam allowance along that curve so that the mask turns out nice and sits nicely on your face. Just remember not to cut too closely to your seam line. So once you've cut into your seam allowance, you can then turn your mask the right way around. So find the end and push it through onto itself. So once you've got your face mask the right way around, make sure that you push into the seams with your fingers and you might want to run your fingers all the way along the seams, along the edges of your face mask to manipulate it as flat as you possibly can. So you're trying to smooth out all the bulk of your face mask. And once you've done that, it'll need a nice good press with the iron. So I'm just going to press all the edges of the face mask with the iron. So I'm manipulating it with my fingers and pushing it into that seam with my fingers and just rolling it back a little bit so I can just see a tiny tiny bit of the outer fabric on the uh, inside there. It's just so that the lining doesn't creep over to the front just so it looks nice and neat. Okay, so that's all pressed um, over now. So I'm going to top stitch across the, the top edge and the bottom edge. You don't have to do this, but um, it will hold it together in place and it will make sure that everything stays in place when you've put it through the washing machine. So I'm just going to top stitch down both of the long edges now uh, using a straight stitch and sewing pretty close to the edge of the fabric, remembering to reverse when I start and reverse when I finish. So I've just finished top stitching my mask, the top edge and the bottom edge. I've sewn quite close to the edge of the fabric. It'll just hold all the pieces 
securely together and so it sits where it should sit even when it's been through the wash so now we need to make the, the channels for the ties of our mask so just these sections here so we do that by rolling the fabric ends over and pressing them with the iron first fold is about a centimeter And then your second fold, just get rid of that little bit of thread there. Your second fold is two centimetres. Press with the iron. Then repeat that step with the other side. So I'm just going to sew my channels now on the sewing machine. Sewing quite close to the edge of the fold. So start sewing reverse. So all the way down. And reverse. Okay, same on both sides. Okay, so now we've finished uh, the mask, so we just need to thread our ties through now. So again, I prefer the uh, the t-shirt yarn, but you can use anything that you can thread through the channels and tie around your head. So I just use a safety pin to thread that through the channel. Okay, just push it through. through the other side I hope you have been able to follow along with this video and either you've made a face mask either the standard one or the one that has the optional pocket where you can insert a filter or if you haven't followed along and made one yet, hopefully this video has given you the confidence that you will be able to, to do that. I have tried uh, to keep this as clear and concise as I possibly can. Um, I've really simplified everything. There's loads and loads of lessons that I could spend hours um, teaching you about in this video. But I wanted the basic outcome um, for you to be able to make a face mask so um hopefully you've been able to do that from this video stay safe everybody if you've got any questions please just get in touch to pop your mask on place it over your head and then make sure you just pull both of the ties together and it'll bring the mask up to your face and then pull nice and tight so it needs to fit nice and snugly around your face. Tie the ties at the back of your head in a bow. It's a nice quick release fastening. And then just adjust around your face mask, making sure it fits nice and snugly against your skin.